John, what do you think of the traffic these days? It's becoming more of an issue in this lovely city of ours. So obviously, we're, we're planning for 500,000 people here now. The growth plans are talking about 50,000 people uh, out in this west end of the city. There's only 122nd Street yeah. and 133rd. That's right. This whole area is called the East Sector. We're talking about 70,000 people on the end of College Drive and 8th Street. Right now, we only got 4.4% of the population riding transit. Less than 5%. That's right, 4.4 percent. They're starting to feel the crunch. Everybody says Saskatoon's not a transit city. So I'm, I'm kind of a blank slate, but I've never been a bus rider except for when I was in, in high school and university. Uh, I think there has to be a strong value offering to knock guys like me out of my truck and, and into a bus. That's what we want to go out and hear from people, you know, and what, what will it take? Now, Zoo is downtown, right? We are, yes. And we offer an eco bonus for our employees. So the company provides a bonus for every day that employees don't yes. drive. That's right. And it's paid on a daily basis, so it's not, it's not something that you have to commit to. I mean, there's days when we're going to need our vehicle, but that's the kind of low commitment that helps it actually be more of a success. Not a bus rider. I'm not. A, I'm not a bus rider, but um, I was, and you know, we just fall into our patterns. What would it take for you to ride the bus? Tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's mostly just habit. It's just just trying it. So, Mark, thanks for inviting us to your office in, here in Stonebridge. Given that uh, that the suburban area, like Stonebridge, is an area that people don't often think of as a place where people commute, thought it'd be good to hear from you, and have the city manager there to hear from you uh, as fellow engineers about that. So what do you think we can do to change that perception that the bus isn't a legitimate yeah. form to commute? Like for me, I, I, don't, I wouldn't care if I had to transfer multiple times to get where I'm going if I knew that the frequency of service was there. It's, it's really vital and, and critical if you commute down College Drive on a daily basis today at 250,000 people. Um, that's a long drive, it's not pleasant. And I think there's maybe even an opportunity this summer with the University Bridge being shut down that is going to force people to take a look at other options of how do they get downtown in the morning to work. Some opportunity for them to get on the bus and, and try it. You know, we're a family of four, we have one car, we still drive to do a lot of our traveling about the city, but you know, for one of us to be able to take the bus to work is, is a, just a great opportunity to avoid that car culture. It, it's also about balance because the transportation infrastructure that our city is going to need is 500,000 if yeah. we depend solely on autos yeah. is, is going to be enormous. How much is an overpass these days, Murray? Well, yeah, I mean, you're looking yeah. at 40 million yeah. to 50 million dollars for an overpass. I mean, we've got work to do as a city and, and you know, provide a service that people will, will actually buy into. Yeah. I also worry about people that don't have money to buy a car. There's more than just uh, overpasses. This is people's lives too, and jobs. We can make the system better, attract more people to ride it. It gives time back to the lives of the people who are using it now. So now we're at the bus mall, and Tanya Gertin, I want to introduce you to Charlie Clark, city councillor. Tanya is a regular bus user from when you had wee little kids to now as a university student. So being a single mom, getting an education, if you think about the moms who are high school students or you know who don't have cars, if we did have more darts, more frequent service, what would that mean in their lives, do you think, or in your life? I think what it is is it gives them more opportunity. And I find if there's the accessibility of the bus and the kindness and the compassion towards it, it'll be more exciting for them to utilize services in the community, the opportunity to get to and from school, get education, and have a better life for themselves and for their children. So John, what do you think? How do you like the bus ride? Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was pleasant and it was comfortable. And you know, it got us from Stonebridge to downtown. And I thought a really reasonable amount of time. This is the first time I've put any sort of serious thought. It makes a lot of sense what you're talking about. April 14th to 24th, 10 days for transit. Can you help us tell the stories and, and uh, maybe even ride the bus a little bit more? I will guarantee you at least two bus rides. And I'm going to use those because actually we're moving and we just got to get the lay of the land. The timing is great. Uh, to actually jar me out of my truck and get me into a bus. Sounds you want great. a hug? Oh, we'll just shake hands. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you.